So, can I beat the hardest boss in Zombies history? So firstly, to even enter the boss fight, you have to beat every single Infinite Warfare Zombies map, which in itself is quite difficult, especially solo. And I did just make a video on beating every Infinite Warfare map for the first time if you want to check that out. But this boss is so hard that I thought I'd make a separate video just on it. So once you do beat every single Infinite Warfare map, you unlock the Director's Cut, which when you use it, on any map, you will spawn in with 25,000 points and every single perk in the game. And seeing that you have the Director's Cut, you then need to beat every single map using it and so even though we've beaten every map we have to then do it again but this time with the director's cut on and once you beat the final map it will then place you into this lobby here and you'll have five minutes to gather everything you need against this boss and one thing to note this boss is in fact a demon his name is Mephistopheles and he is the main antagonist behind this whole story he was actually using Willard Weiler if you've seen my other video you will know who he is but he was using Willard Weiler to collect souls so going into the boss fight I did fail many many times like I said, this is the hardest boss fight in Zombies history. Although that is just what I've heard. I've not done every single boss fight. But whenever the Mephistopheles boss comes up, it is pretty much synonymous with the hardest boss in Zombies history. And so there is a boss fight tab in Infinite Warfare where you can practice. And I practiced a lot. And even with all that practice, I failed many, many times. And one of the worst things about this boss fight is that you have to beat the last map in Infinite Warfare Zombies every time just to enter the boss fight. So you have to beat the Beast from Beyond just to enter the boss fight. And one time I didn't even beat that Easter. Egg. But finally, on to my final game. So I beat the beast from beyond. I have five minutes and I get to hit the magic wheel. As you can see on the door there, it has the timer. And every single weapon I get from the magic wheel is already double pack a punch, which is awesome. And I get the Kendall's and also the Venom Z. And which, if you guys did play Extinction and not Infinite Warfare, would remember from Extinction. And so as we enter the boss fight, we then get hit with this little cutscene where we meet Mephistopheles in himself. He then changes into the actress from Shaolin Shuffle. And and declares that we are good at collecting souls and now he wants to consume our souls so then we can collect souls I think is what it means and then he finally turns into his final form and now we're into the boss fight so at the start here Mephistopheles comes up and this bit's hilarious to me because our character has some funny lines so this boss fight may look entirely just confusing if you've never done it before, but it's actually pretty simple. So there's just five symbols around the map and you just need to activate them one at a time without going down. So this first one I'm activating here and I'm just watching Mephistopheles wherever he moves. The Venom Z is really good for this because you can shoot it on the ground and it does damage for about five seconds afterwards and it does a lot of damage to the skeletons. And this first symbol here is much easier than the other ones because Mephistopheles only has about two attacks he can do. One is he can shoot three fireballs like he's just done there. And the second one is he can raise zombies from the dead or should I say skeletons. So once you do stand on the symbol long enough, the four blue souls will come out of the symbol. I believe they're souls. And then you just need to shoot the souls with the entangler at Mephistopheles. Once you shoot him four times, he will then come to the center. And then you just need to shoot the symbol on his body that you just activated. He will then go outside of the arena again and then make the map go dark, hover the sun and then spawn in a bunch of aliens so each time you do this it gets progressively harder and harder so pretty much anyone can do this first symbol here it's really not that hard and then once you do complete it the sun will then open up and meteorites will start shooting out of it and you just need to hide behind these rocks there's two rocks on either side very simple i can imagine the first time doing this though if you had no idea what to do it would be a pain in the ass trying to dodge meteorites but if you're not a dumb ass <laughs> you should be pretty good you just go behind this rock here and then we're on to our second symbol already. So on the second symbol here, he does have an extra move where he can go into the center of the map and then smack down. When he does that, again, you just want to hide behind a rock. Otherwise, you will go down or have a red screen. So you got to be very careful of that. But it is a very easy attack to dodge. And then here, always got to watch out. The worst move that he will do on you, well, there's a few really bad ones. But the one that got me probably the most is when he just shoots three fireballs out because he shoots them really fast and you will go down if, all, if two of the fireballs hit you, I believe depending on the distance however so i finish the second symbol and then i shoot my four souls into him again wherever he's standing he will spawn facing that way when he gets into the circle so i know that that's why i stand in that direction there i then use my xpr which is an insane weapon i think that's what it's called i'm actually not entirely sure and then i use my kendall's again for the for the little round where he blocks out the sun and so as you can see so far it's the same thing over and over except mephistopheles gets stronger he gets more attacks and also there are more aliens 
aliens that will spawn in and more zombies each time you do a symbol. So this time a slasher also spawned in. He's very easy to kill. So I just use my XPR on him. And then I grab a max ammo and then go behind this rock here again. And the meteorites start flying in again. Even when I'm behind this rock, I make sure to lay down because I've actually nearly gone down just sitting behind it. And then onto our third symbol. So you've noticed I've done the three symbols closest to him just so I can get them out of the way because they're the hardest ones to do. He threw a meteorite there. So that's another movie he has now where he could throw a meteorite. I make sure just to hide behind the rocks because that meteorite has some crazy range and it actually moves while you're moving. So I just like to not risk it and go right behind the meteorite. I'm now on the symbol again and I'm using the Venom Z again because this thing is absolutely insane, really. If you didn't have it on this game, it would be really hard to do this boss fight because it allows you to shoot it down on the ground and then you can just stare at the Mephistopheles and make sure he's not doing any crazy moves. Now onto my third one and all I've got to do is shoot the four souls again. He chucks a meteorite in there so I get as far away as possible. The thing about using this entangler to throw the souls at Mephistopheles is it slows you down a little bit. So if he shoots like the three balls at you, for example, you will go down. So you have to be very fast whenever you're grabbing those souls. And so here I hit him with my fourth one. You can see it start glowing onto his chest there. I grab my XPR out and then I just spam him. I am using a legendary XPR. If you guys do remember Infinite Warfare, just like Advanced Warfare, I'm pretty sure, had different variants that you could get from supply drops. And my XPR is actually a legendary variant. So it's pretty damn good. And plus it's one of the best guns in the game other than maybe the molar. And the Kendall's are really good for this part. Like I've used them every single time, but this is the, the third stage where he covers the sun. So this is going to get a little bit more difficult here, but with the double pack of punch Kendall's, it's not too hard. The next time we get up to the stage, two blue rhinos will spawn in and they're a pain in the ass. So you're going to be very careful and get very lucky with where they spawn. And you can see why I did the first three first, just so I can chill in this area. That wall that he puts up in the center of the map is really annoying as well. And if you get hit by that, you will instantly go down. Um, here he uses the black hole and the best way to counter this is to just lay down. And I actually really like when he uses the black hole, unless he uses a fire move at the same time as a black hole, which he can do in the next stage. But usually if he uses the black hole, it's kind of just free. You can just lay there and get as much time as possible. I do make sure to dodge his three shots of fireballs as well. They come out of absolutely nowhere. And as the stages go on, he starts to increase the fire rate and start doing more moves more often. Here I do my fourth talisman. And so he blocks out the sun for the fourth time. And like I said, two rhinos will spawn in on the stage. So I make sure I use my Kendall's. I'm really kind of panicking at the stage though, because this is where the boss fight starts to get really hard. At the moment though, I haven't done too bad. Here you can see the two rhinos spawning in and that was very lucky I didn't go down then. They just missed me. And then I use the XPR and this just absolutely demolishes them. I go around here just to get some X ammo back because they do spawn on the ground because there's no max ammo at this stage here. And then the sun opens up and the meteorites start streaming in again. And there's actually more meteorites, so you gotta be very careful. All you can really do is hide behind this rock, but sometimes they will hit you depending on where you're actually sitting behind them. And now onto my fifth and final talisman. So this is one of the most annoying moves he can do. He can spawn fire in the middle and the fire will just spread all around. Luckily, it didn't spread to where I was standing there. So far, I've actually had a pretty lucky run as well. And I'm always just watching him. Is he gonna shoot those three fires at me? When he does that move where he puts his arm up above his shoulder there, that's when he flies a meteorite at you. There's a lot of moves that you have to memorize. And the only way you know what he's gonna do is by his hand movements, which sometimes it get confusing because he does similar hand movements. But for my fifth talisman, that was actually pretty chill as well. And at this stage in the game, it's really just RNG what he's gonna do. And you just gotta hope you're in the right place at the right time. I use my Venom Z just to remove all these zombies and shoot my final talisman. And now this is the final stage of the boss fight. All I've gotta do is shoot him in the body, but there's gonna be meteorites spawning in and he's gonna have a really high rate of different abilities he's gonna use. And so here he uses the black hole on the ground. So I just hide behind this rock. Also a lot of different variety of enemies that you saw all through Infinite Warfare are gonna spawn in as well. Here he tries to do a smash down, which I actually like because I can get quite a lot of damage on him. I am trying to use my SMG here as much as possible because it probably has the highest amount of output out of all my weapons on the boss himself. And at this stage, it's actually kind of chill. I've already done about one talisman and I was shooting my candles at him, which is kind of difficult because you have to lead on with your shot. And like I said, this is just pure RNG at this point. I have no idea what the hell is even going on. He's doing a bunch of stuff here. He halves the map, which is a pain in the ass. If he halves the map and then does 
does a fire ability as well, you're pretty much dead. So I was kind of trying to provoke him to do the three shot ability, which I think you can kind of do. If you get close enough to him, you can kind of provoke him just to shoot those three shots. But that's very risky because the closer he gets, the shorter the amount of time those fireballs are going to get to you. And you're going to go down very quick if you don't have fast reflexes. Here he does the fire ability again, and I'm just being very wary. And he also does a black hole, which is the most sketchy thing ever. But I was incredibly lucky the fire didn't go to me here. And the black hole on itself after the fire leaves is very chill, like I said earlier. I then start shooting my Venom Z. And if you guys pronounce the Venom Z, I'm sorry, I pronounce it Z for some weird reason. I don't know why. And you can see I've got all of my four talisman masks up. They're the masks that I was picking up at the very start of the video after I did all of the director cut Easter eggs. And finally, I do so much damage on the Mephistopheles. I can use all of these masks here and they connect to one another with a big laser, which then shoots the Mephistopheles and he will land in the center here of the boss arena and I can just spam him. And, and watching this back, I actually did a pretty good job. I'm not going to lie. This actually doesn't look as hard as what it was. Obviously, I didn't even go down this time, but it is a really, really, really hard boss fight. Trust me. I'm not sure what he was doing then with that little black hole that he was spawning. Maybe that's what he does. If you don't kill him fast enough, it will kill you. But I won. We beat the hardest boss fight in zombies history. And I'm very happy because that's infinite warfare completely completed. And I absolutely love this game. This game is genuinely amazing. And you can see here, we're going back to all the maps. I'm not entirely sure what the ending of Infinite Warfare actually means because at the very end, it just says to be continued. But in that jar there, that is where all of the Infinite Warfare worlds are. And also, I guess you could say where all the films are for the world. So hopefully you guys did enjoy it. I love Infinite Warfare Zombies. I'm very glad I beat this boss. And let me know in the comments, what do you guys think is the hardest boss in Zombies history? I'm just going off what most people said. So far, my hardest boss, I haven't played many Easter eggs, is definitely Mephistopheles though.